first of all, Coach Thibodeau, thank you for giving up the time to speak with us today. It's our opportunity to get a little preview of what the Nichols Colonels baseball season might look like. How are you? How's your family? How's, how's all of the guys on the team? You know what? It's um, it's it's starting to get a little emotional everywhere. I, I my kids are getting excited. My wife is getting excited. And she never really gets that excited. She's usually more of uh, worried about time, babysitters, and everything. But um, but I can tell, and I and sense that our players are, are, are uh, in a good way, getting very emotional right now because it's been a long time. This is not normal, you know, to be away from the game for almost an entire year and play an actual baseball game. That and we've been Zooming as a team since last June and throughout the summer, at least once every two weeks, we had a team Zooms just like we're doing now, just to just to know each other and talk to each other. And and uh, so that was interesting. We went through about with COVID a little bit. We haven't been able to play outside competition. This is exciting. This is um, what you worked really hard for. And, and we're fortunate because half of the country is not able to play this weekend because of weather issues. So um, we're just, look, we're fortunate. We're tickled to death. Um, I can't wait to, to see our players. When they take the field, I'm going to have to control them a little bit emotionally because I, I, can, I can sense that uh, it's going to be exciting. Obviously, with the COVID situation, there's been some adversity to come overcome. Because consider that a year ago, you know, a little over a year ago, you were pretty much shut down and you were that sport, you know, that was shut down first. Going into this particular season, this is your 11th season over at Nickel State. Is it a little different going into this season? Do, do you maybe not take things so much for granted anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had so much time to think last year. Like, I took so many notes. Everything I would think about during the day and, and when you couldn't come in the office and you couldn't do anything. Um, when you were stuck at home, you just all I thought about was all the things that I did right and mostly all the things that I did wrong in my career and what I can do to get better. And so um, I, I, we used COVID as a positive as opposed to to a negative and we got some good players because of it. And, and, and uh, But for me personally, um, I used it as a time to kind of make sure that, I, you know, I was getting better as, as well. And so. Um, we put a lot of time and hard work into this thing. And so as a coach, it's a little emotional too and, and, and exciting as well. And I, I will promise you this, those first two, maybe three weeks, maybe even a month of March into April last year, when the weather was incredible on the weekends, I would find myself waking up on Saturday and Sunday mornings, like kind of frustrated, kind of having mood swings because you're so used to going to the office and ready to throw batting practice and, uh, it becomes your normal way of life. I've done this for 16 to 17 years of my life. So um, when you didn't have that, that was an empty feeling, man. That was, that was interesting. There was nothing to watch. There was nothing. It was, just, it was awkward. So I will never take one day for granted. I feel like our players are the same. Listen, you, you sparked something in my memory. Right now we're sitting in, in a cold situation here. But last year, whenever the pandemic really kicked in in March, the weather became beautiful in the spring, yes. it was just a wonderful season to have ball. So I'm sure that added to everything along the way. You did mention something related to the kids on the team. And obviously the last couple of weeks I've been going through the roster. It looks like an expanded roster. It looks like it's a larger roster than you would usually yeah. see on the collegiate level. Is, is that true? Yes, we have 43 players. And normally we have a roster limit of 35. So uh, we're looking at eight more players on our team, and it looks like 20 more guys when you're out there. But um, I'm okay with it just based upon the things we're going to have to go through if we have contact tracing or someone has a, a positive test somewhere along the way. And, and not only is he out, but his roommates are out too. So, so it, but there was a point in time this year where we didn't have anybody sick uh, in fall practice and in, in spring practice as well. But we had like six guys out with contact tracing. So that – that's a little sketchy and it's tough and it's, it's hard to deal with. And uh, see, if you don't have the numbers, if we didn't have those numbers, we would not have been able to enter squad. So thankfully we were able to piece some things together, but um, it is a larger roster and, and it'll be a larger roster again next year. Um, they're going to go from next year's mandate. We don't, we have an unlimited roster this year. Um, next year you'll be able to have a 40 man roster as opposed to 35 men. I would imagine that that would stick forever. Not only is the roster expanded, but there's also differences in the way we're going to see play this year. Southland Conference, 
has decided to do something a little different. I'll let you explain it. And I'll also ask you to maybe talk about the reasoning behind what they're doing this year. So talk about what we might expect when it comes to conference play. So we decided we were pretty proactive on this. Um, we talked about this in the fall. I, I, there's so many un unknowns. And so you don't know going into this thing when you have to vote for it, you know, what's right, what's wrong. We don't know. We don't, what we do know is that if we have a ton of midweek games and you lose a couple of guys to uh, contact tracing, as we said earlier, or you have some guys out. I mean, think about this. If I have two midweek games next week and I play three games next weekend and then two more midweek games after that, you're looking at, at seven baseball games, maybe more than that, that a player would miss. And so we kind of took that into our deal where maybe we're eliminating some games that our, some players will miss and we're guaranteed these four games and on the weekend. So we're going to play four game conference weekends this year as opposed to three. So what happens there is, is you're adding games and you're taking away from, you know, you're going to, you're going to take away from your midweek games, which sometimes is tough because your players like to play those midweek matchups. Um, and you have a long drought. You don't like long droughts in baseball. You don't like to go from Sunday to Friday without playing a game. So um, that's going to be tough. But what I do like is that the four game weekend, you'll play Friday, you'll play two on Saturday and one on Sunday. Um, but you're spread out a little bit in case of the virus or the, in case there is a situation where you have guys that have to be held out. They're not missing that many games. Let's talk a little bit about the ball. I mean, where it all starts, the pitching. Sure. And uh, obviously, Trevor Kilcrease was sort of your ace last year. He is returning. I guess Trevor's now about, what, 33, 34 years old? Yeah, I think he's uh, just a couple years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, you also had another guy who had a lot of innings, and that is Tyler Terrio, who was kind of your yeah. middle of the week guy. So sure. from a perspective of having leadership on the bump, you certainly have that. Talk about your pitching and what we might expect this year. So I'll start from the back and, and work forward and, and, and think about our bullpen, Joe Taylor. I would put him up against any closer in the United States. I'm telling you, he's he's really, really good. A left-handed closer, he had five saves. In a, and just, we weren't sure yet we had. And when he came out of the pen against LSU and, and got in there a little bit, it was – and he had three saves in his first three uh, outings. It was exciting uh, and really established himself as a stopper. Um, he's 89, 90, 91, 92, can get up to 93 at times with a very hard slider and a changeup. That's not normal for a, for a closer. Um, Bo Bellato also returns for year three, another 90 to 94 left-handed pitcher out of the bullpen, not really a closer, but just kind of a bridge guy to get to Joe Taylor late in the game to come face some lefties late in the lineup, come try to dice through the, the heart of the lineup for the opponent. Kate Evans was just coming along pretty good last year. He was at Auburn as a freshman um, and was the Tennessee player of the year years ago. So he's in our bullpen. He's 90, 94 with a hard slider. Um, he's working on some consistency right now. He's back as well. Peter Holland, third year guy from Mississippi, a Juco in Mississippi and Meridian. Another hard throwing right handed pitcher with tons of experience from the last few years is back as well. And there's some other pieces, some young guys as well. Devin DeSondra is going to throw out of our pen. He's going to come light it up for an inning. He's pretty good for an inning, man. He's, he's been up to 91 as well with a really hard breaking ball with E.D. White. A guy we feel like he can really help us out of the pin as opposed to just starting him once a week. His velocity comes when he just throws, you know, once once every couple of get a days. So uh, we like him in a relief role as well. You might see him on opening day come out of the pin first. We'll see where we're at. But uh, And also Nico Saltafromaggio, a kid from Holy Cross, another freshman who's been up to 92 as well. So there's some young guys in there, some old guys in there, a lot of maturity, a lot of velocity. But when you come down to the, the starting side of things, you mentioned Tyler Terrio. He's so versatile for us. I'm so worried that uh, I just – I really like that left-handed arm out of the pin when we need him. Um, so – for this weekend, he's not going to start this weekend. He's going to relieve for us and maybe see him twice this weekend. But Andrew Heckman will start on Sunday for us. Um, uh, Heckman was uh, probably as good of a freshman as, as we had for a little bit a couple of years ago. was coming on a little bit last year as a sophomore and, and now um, – going to be a you know a third year guy and and, and a very mature Sunday starter that, that gets it and so I'm excited about him but he had to win that out because there was a lot of competition for that 
Um, and then Saturday, Chase Gearing may be our best arm overall. Uh, he's just from Michigan. He is a junior college transfer. Um, I, I ran into this kid in the Dominican Republic with his old junior college coach a few years ago and created a relationship with him like that. And he's a big 6'5", 6'6", righty. Um, that is 90-93 with a, with a hard slider and uh, really good at that. So we, I wanted him to go on Friday ability-wise, but mentally he just couldn't beat out Trevor Kilcrease, who I was doing everything I can to not start Trevor Kilcrease on Friday. Um for many reasons. One, I wanted him to, to, to see a game. I, he's been in, in thrust into that Friday role for two years. I wanted him to see see a game. And the goal is to win as many games overall, but you got to win that Saturday game. That's a big day. Uh, whether or not it wins the series or gets you evened up, it's a big deal. So I was trying to get Kill, Kill Chris in that role, but he's been too good, and I just trust him. And for us to go 1-0, and which is our goal for for this week, is just to go 1-0. We, we just want to be 1-0 and on Friday. I wanted Trevor to have the ball tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow. So our uh, Friday, but uh, you know, that's, he deserved it. He's earned it. And, and again, he's older, mature, he's captain and, and we want to have the ball. In. Let's talk about position play a little bit. Dane Washington is going to be back in the fold and I assume fully healthy now. And yeah. uh, some of those other guys, there's a couple of local guys who are involved with all of this, but if you can just kind yeah. of run down what your infield and outfield might look like. I will I'll kind of go like from a lineup standpoint. I think West Toops is going to lead off for us. Uh, Thibodeau native. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We got a Thibodeau native leading off, a Homa native hitting in the two hole, Zane Washington, um, who has been like a son to me. I, I absolutely love the kid for what he's done for our team, our players, his leadership, his quiet leader. West Toops has come in from LSU, and I can really feel like he feels like he's at home now. So you got those two guys in your first two spot, you know, top top of the lineup. You got some guys that are going to be on base a lot. Dane Simon has been here for four years now and has been through all the wars and uh, team captain for us and a kid from Destrehan that uh, is a winner. He's going to start in right field tomorrow, and he's coming off a hard, gruesome surgery that he had last summer on a uh, hip labrum and a – and a hernia, a sports hernia. So he's been rehabbing for a long time, and he looks better than he ever has right now. So I'm proud of him. Basil Williams will hit in the four hole tomorrow. He's going to see a lot of time in the outfield as well, but he's going to DH tomorrow. He's a switch hitter. Started his career at Mississippi State. Um, didn't work out there, so transferred to Jones, and we were able to get him. We have a 21-year-old uh, freshman starting tomorrow, which is – he's a grown man as a freshman. It's unbelievable. He still has four years of eligibility, but – um, so he'll be there. Mason Turner's going to see some time in the outfield. He had a little bout with with uh, with COVID that he missed two weeks of practice recently. So uh, he's coming back in the. He'll be in the mix as well. Uh, but uh, Dylan Bell is going to be moved to first base this year. He's going to start at uh, first base and, and probably hitting that that five hole tomorrow against a righty. Um, had a tremendous offseason. Great leader. Uh, working on his Masters now. He's going to wear Daryl Hamilton's number eleven this year. Um, tremendous leader, tremendous guy. Uh, six hole, possibly uh, Parker Cadu, a Thibodeau native, an Edie White grad, um, shortstop. Uh, has out, outplayed everyone for that position. And and um, so, oh, I got to keep him hungry and keep him humble and keep him out of worrying about, you know, the what people think about him in Thibodeau. You know, that's the hard thing for these kids that are local. They're so worried sometimes. There's a pressure of being local that – Everyone's uh, talking about them and worried about them, which is a fun thing, but you got to be able to handle it and control it. And so, like I told Parker, there's freshmen starting uh, all over the country. And, and so you're no different, uh, just but be, be, be different. So he's uh, he's been tremendous for us. I'm excited to see him play tomorrow. And, um, still kind of working on some things, but we returned Eric Hernandez behind the plate, but we also got a grad transfer um, that I feel like probably will start. Greg Enderberg is a switch hitting catcher from George Washington University. Um, J.D. Davis, another fifth-year grad transfer from the Citadel, will we'll probably start at second base tomorrow. Um, and then Austin Kane is a junior college transfer from Illinois. will probably start at third base for us tomorrow. So, But we have like five or six guys that I didn't mention that will come off the bench in some way, shape, or form, like Alec Paz and Blaze Brewwood and Mason Turner and uh, some names that you've heard of, Caleb Peel, guys that have been in the program. We're going to use a lot of players because we can. Brand new video board, scoreboard. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it is. Uh, we put a lot of time into thinking about how to do this and how it can pop and be presented well. I think a scoreboard at a ballpark is extremely important. 
Uh, it's the first thing people see when they walk in the ballpark, and it's where your eyes are at the whole time. So it's going to be absolutely gorgeous with kernels um, and print all the way across, big, big letters all the way across the top of the scoreboard with a video board on there. Uh, but we're just going to do digital. We won't do video yet. We're not, we don't have the capabilities of, of replay just yet, but we'll have some digital graphics up there or player faces. And um, it's, it, we're going to have a velo uh, miles per hour up there where radar gun would be able to show you the, uh, what the guys are throwing. So it'll be fan friendly for sure. Um, just this, the surface itself is, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the outfield is as good as it gets in our league. I, I, look, the way I like to, to, to brag about our park is I feel like our park is a really cool Jeep Wrangler. It's, it's not a, it's not a fancy Rolls Royce or a Porsche or, or anything like that, but it is a cool thing to hang out in. And, and so um, I, I, the, this, the entrance is gorgeous as, as we weren't really able to show it off much last year with the early exit of the season, but our cages so Dustin Malbro is a former player helped us close in our cages and make a facility out of it. Our players spend so much time in there. The place looks beautiful. Um, it, it is a gym. I love it. And uh, we're going to keep growing this thing. And there are more plans that are going to – things we're going to break around on this summer too that I can't really talk about yet. But, man, it, it looks great. Let's talk a little bit about – and I hate to be negative, but as we start the season – and truth be known, basically what happened here today is is you have a game under your belt. You played Eastern in one game before we're – you know before we're actually showing this. So hopefully when I let into these interviews, I could say that the Colonels are one and O at this point in the season. That yeah. being said, is there anything glaring right now that you're thinking to yourself, this has to get better quick one part of the ball game that you might be worried about? Or oh, maybe it's not even on the field. Maybe it's leadership. Maybe it's something that's off the field. One thing you're sort of maybe in the back of your mind saying this has to get right quick. We have to, uh, we have to take away some hits on the infield. I don't think it's there yet. I think the ability's there, but we're starting – we have some new faces starting on the infield from last year that passed up guys that were here last year that are still on the roster. So um, there's some trust there that uh, needs to take place. They need to play more together. We're talking about a kid from Thibodeau at shortstop, a kid from South Carolina at second, a kid from Illinois at third base. None of these kids knew each other eight months ago. And now all of a sudden they're trying to take away hits from other teams together. So they still are learning each other. I can tell that every day we get out there, we just need reps. J.D. Davis needs reps at second base with Parker Cadu. They just need to be out there. J.D. was hurt all fall, so he wasn't able to participate in fall practice. And Austin kane has been fighting a couple of injury bugs as well. And we're going to be out there tomorrow for the first, you know, one of the first few times together. They're still learning each other. We got to get better there, but we have the ability to do that. I think the more we play together – the more uh, dominant our defense can be there. A sales pitch a little bit. Now, obviously, again, I said we have one game under the belt with Eastern today that happened earlier today. Tomorrow you take them on at 630. For all Colonel fans and baseball fans out there, give us a sales pitch of why people should go out there and support the Colonels tomorrow, the rest of the series with Eastern and going forward into the season. Good Lord, you're going to come out and see some kids from this area. And they're going to be extremely entertaining to watch. When you watch Zane Washington play, and you're finally going to get to see a healthy, stressless Zane Washington play. That kid can play. And he's from right there at home. You're going to see Mason Turner in practice. When he's out there, that kid is an incredible leader. Like These kids are pretty amazing to have on this team. You see Wes Toops play. He's entertaining. Man, he can play. He's just steady Eddie all the time. And he loves playing at Nichols. Like, this is not – a disappointment in life for him that LSU didn't work out. This is like a renewed energy in life that this is where I should have came from from the beginning. And that's how he treats every single day. Wes Toops is the first person on the field every single day, and it shows up in his game. Um, you're going to see some catches that can absolutely play. You're going to see Parker Cadu, a freshman from E. White, whose dad played here years ago. Um, this kid can play, man. He, he's playing – I got to keep t reminding him, hey, man, you're really good. You're not just okay – you keep holding yourself back into thinking you're just supposed to be okay. He's really good. He's going to go through some freshman growing pains, but he's tremendous. And then you're going to see some guys that, that maybe aren't from here come in and, and, and have fallen in love with the place. Some seniors that didn't, that got another chance in life from a year ago. You're going to see some hard velocity in the bullpen. There's some entertainment value on the field. When you come, you're going to, if it costs seven bucks to get into the ballpark, 
it's going to be worth every penny because our kids are going to play extremely hard and they play with extreme energy. Um, so we have 32 home games. And when there's a sun in the sky and it's 72 degrees in the spring, there ain't a better place. I'm telling you, our ballpark's like a cool Jeep Wrangler. You get to come out there and have a beer and a hot dog and, and watch the Colonels play. These kids are going to be – they're going to be special. Um, and, and, and I look forward to, to, to having as many people as we can in the stadium. I want to remind everybody you can go to gocolonels.com, G-E-A-U-X colonels.com, and you can see the entire schedule there. As he mentioned, 32 home games. Yeah. Thanks so much for giving us the time. You're always very good to us. We appreciate it. We know it's a busy, busy time for you going forward. Best of luck in the season, and we hope everything – listen, I'm knocking on wood right now because I know baseball and softball from last year are the right. ones who had their heart really – yeah, not hard. So we do hope sure. everything goes okay. I, I think it's going to go great. I just think we need to keep moving forward. And and um, these kids, as they start playing, man, it's, it's going to be a fun time for them. It's, it's their experience, not ours, you know? Yes. Thank you, Coach. Thank you so much, Dan. Go Colonels.